Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay and in this video I'm going to explain a little bit about the setup process of the GRID Master Controller Wizard. It's a little bit of an abstract process since this is an advanced rigging technique and it might take a little bit of practice to get your master controllers working the way that you want them to. You can see in this video I already have my interpolation grid wizard set up, but if that's a step you still need to take, you can find that video under the Using the Interpolation Grid Wizard. To help us visualize this, we can actually bring in our grid from our node library and plug that into our composite so we can visually see and plan our posing for the basketball based on the grid that is formed when we open up the grid wizard. When we launch our master controller, we're going to get a window that looks a little bit like this. So here you can see that I have my grid. This is zero, zero. I can zoom out a little bit. So you can see what we're already working with. If you've watched the interpolated grid master controller video, then you'll see that uh, for the basketball, I've actually used a custom four by three grid because this basketball has 12 poses, six regular, and then another six that have been flipped. And you can see here that I've actually quickly taken the time to draw out which orientation is going to be assigned to each grid spot. With the grid master controller wizard, you are basically creating a grid with all the preset poses stored inside, but you're not limited to these poses. You can actually interpolate between all of the grid points so that you actually end up with an infinite amount of poses, even though we've only set the 12 keyframes. Now, because this build has been flipped, we're gonna run into a problem where the basketball grooves are gonna show the actual flipping of the artwork. Because I've taken that into consideration, we're actually gonna to have to change this a little bit to create a, a custom grid square. But essentially, the corners give me the outside of my basketball rotation. And as I approach the center, my basketball will start to show a little bit more of the depth. Now, if I go through the center, this is exactly where the flip is taking place. It's not very pretty. We don't really want to animate with this. This is not something um, that we want to hit out of the floor uh, per se. So what we do really need to do is think about how we're going to limit the access of this flipped area. So. To make it easy, it's, it's really simple to go through your grid process and set up your, your first grid coordinate with your first pose, your second grid coordinate with your second pose, and so on until you get through the rest of your, of your scene. Now, when you go through this process, you're going to use whole numbers. If I open this again here, I'm just going to pretend, said OK. So this position here is negative 4 to 2. It's really quick to just work in this fashion to just set all your key poses. I'm gonna close this again. And then from here, what you can actually do is change your position of your grid coordinates so that you start to limit here. Now, this is something that I have displayed in the Using Your Interpolation Grid Wizard Master Controller video. But what I've actually done is taken the inner coordinates and changed them to negative 0.1 and 0.1. So now if I go ahead and move my grid master controller, you can see that I have a more appropriate outline of where my basketball can move to. And now you can see that even though I've set only six key poses and six flipped key poses on the right side, I can actually throw my little cursor anywhere in between and that gives me the ability to create a 3D looking model with quite a bit of depth. And if I trace the outside, it's gonna look like my basketball is just spinning around in a circle. One of the most important steps in creating your master controller process is actually gonna be testing how your rig will respond to the master controllers. Because everybody kind of builds a little bit differently, you're gonna find that your master controllers might not react the way that you want them to, and it might take a little bit of extra manipulations or a little bit of exaggerations in the posing. Maybe you'll have to reimagine the order of the poses so that it matches the square a little bit more. 
try and do a quick and dirty run so that you don't waste any time in the setup process when really you might have some major rig work to fix.